Welcome back. You're watching Big Deal and we are discussing the scope and rise as well as the potential of the agri-tech sector in the country. Now, Dr. Ram, being a player in this particular space and also looking at exports of agri-products, how can exports as well as distribution be enhanced further by the use of technology? And also, have you all collaborated with startups, new age companies in agri-tech space for the enhancement of business lately? Obviously. See, the agriculture produced, not only agriculture produce, even the agriculture agri-inputs exports are being increased substantially for developed countries like North America, Australia, and New Zealand because they are more advanced than India for adopting the new technologies. Here we have little challenges to, if you have a technology, for us it took almost like one and a half decades to get the technology to the uh, lab to the land for the farmers. While one Jay, Jay Kishan has entered into Pratishta about one and a half years back, they helped us to bridge the gap between the farming community and Pratishta. And then we are able to deal with the government of India and bring down, uh, bring some of the innovative concepts in the Fertilizer Control Act so that the farmers will get benefit out of it. For example, you take organic nano uh, technology. It is replacement for chemical fertilizers. Th this gives a massive impact for the agriculture sector as a whole in the Indian government, number one. Number two, the organic nanotechnology does not believe in dumping the fertilizers. It gives a required nutrition for the crop. At the same time, it will not reduce the crop productivity because we are the growing population. We have to take care of food security and food security, uh, food safety. At the same time, we need to take care of environment and soil health. These are all uh, related activities when agriculture technology is involved. Yes. At the same time, at the same time, most important thing is that everybody talks about increasing the agriculture productivity. Agriculture productivity. Yes, we are the uh, developed country. We are being developed country all the time, and then the growing population. We need to have enough grains to uh, uh, give it to the uh, you know consumers. The Biggest question, you know, one of the points that has been come, come as a uh, supply chain solutions. Here we have seen literally and witnessed during the COVID period when rations has been given to the farmers or the poor people, a lot of ration has been thrown away on the roads because they are there have been affected by the fungus or fungal or so many uh, yes. uh, issues uh, for uh, uh, food grains. Here, this is the most important topic that how not only increasing the productivity by using high-tech technology for enhancement of agricultural productivity and while uh, taking care of soil health and environment. At the same time, we need to consider how agriculture can be converted into an industry. Yes. Once upon a time, once upon a time, you remember that we used to call poultry farmer. Now, poultry, no more a farming. If you call any poultry farmer, he will say, no, I'm not a farmer. I'm an industry. It is a multi-billion dollar company. Like you take Winkies, you take Suguna, it is 10,000, 15,000 crore companies and globally used to yes. multi-billion multi dollar companies. Similarly, we have a dairy farming earlier. You now, dairy is no more a farming now. It is a multi-billion dollar company, multi-billion dollar business. Why not agriculture can be a multi-billion dollar industry? That is a big question mark. Yes, I don't say that agriculture is not converted into industry like we have a sugar, sugar uh, production and all, but those are all not the important thing because that is only based on sugarcane related activity. What about the other agriculture? Do products? Dr. Ram, you raise a very important point because uh, India as a nation is so focused on agrarian economy first and currently our economy is struggling with one point which is food inflation. So the food prices and uh, food produce is just so critical for the economy. So very important point raised there. But investors uh, on the other hand also need to lend that support to a sector which which is growing and which is just so critical for our economic growth. So Ashish, while every investor has been telling me for the last two, three years that agri-tech has a lot of potential, not much money has really flown in or any big companies have been, uh, you know, uh, has been an outcome of this industry so far. Where are the lacunas? When we, when we look at the overall quantum of capital that flows into the country, uh, that's itself stands as massive billion dollars a month now. 
And when you look at, this is particularly with respect to startups in the tech ecosystem, I mean. And when you look at the overall quantum that does get into agri, it's a fraction of the amount. So that's a valid observation, Nisha. When you look at the sector per se, we have seen that it, amongst the various verticals around technological applications, it has been one of the uh, later emerging factors, later emerging sectors. And the prima facie reason is that as an ecosystem, there is a certain pattern in which the successful companies have been built in India. There are many of them are listed companies on the conventional businesses. But when it comes to tech usage and application, there has been a relatively more uh, slower pace of growth. The, there is no lacuna as such. We have seen that there were a few areas that the government has been very, very active. So in the last four or five years, you would observe that there has been a fair bit of intervention and a positive value add that the government has created in the space. They have come up with the ability to have the farmers directly put their products out there at the Mondays. They have created the direct benefit system linking to the bank account. And there has been agri stack vision, which was put out there in somewhere around 2020, which was post COVID. Yes. All of these measures do augur well. And we will see that like the India stack on the financial services side, including the likes of UPI and the bunch of other initiatives, these will become catalytic for the growth from here on. Yes. But also the important is there are many areas below that. So there is biotech, there is agri-tech, there is financial services allied to agri. On yes. those verticals, we have seen a fair bit of funding. Yes. So that is not something which has not been in the light of investors. As the market starts growing, you will see D2C brands or you will see farm to product op product opportunities all coming through and you will see massive opportunities around exports as well. Right. Uh, so uh, great potential and this can become a large sector of the future and we have seen many new sectors being developed post the COVID and digital revolution. Final word to you, Arjun, being an agri-tech player and uh, this space, how do you see the next few triggers coming in and the milestones for the sector on the whole and how do you see it grow very quickly? Sure. Uh, Sunish, I think, uh, you know, our sector has had its fair share of learnings, right? And uh, from those learnings, uh, the sector and the companies are emerging much stronger going forward. One of the biggest learnings uh, for our sector has been not to compete with the traditional industry, but rather to be able to collaborate with the traditional industry. And by traditional industry, I mean fantastic, uh, you know, traditional businesses like the one run by Dr. Ram here of Pratishtha Industries. So it is that, you know, folks like us on the agri-tech side need to build the right kind of technology systems right. for the various stakeholders that participate here. Right? Yes. And it cannot just be focused towards farmers or towards dealers and suppliers or merchants who are working very closely with farmers yes. or even corporates who are working with those merchants very closely, but also banks and other sort of financial services institutions who are getting connected to these folks. As we see, um, you know, the agri-tech ecosystem is spread across finance, raw material, yes. advisory, marketing, processing, and productizing. And we believe stronger partnerships between agri-techs and traditional businesses in yes. a more top-down approach where agri-techs are being able to partner up with the corporates then further partner up with their value chains and supply chains and finally be able to give the final value to the customer who may be the farmer may potentially be the most risk mitigated cost effective and trust based network strategy to be able to reach the customer all right so building blocks for creating that whole infrastructure is in the works and this is one sector which is set to grow and all of you have been participants in that but my final editor take on this would be that all of this this should uh, land up in really um, the welfare of our farmers as well as they are the nerve center of the agriculture sector and we'll wait to see that as the this particular space really uh, gets enhanced and the potential grows going forward. Ashish, Dr. Ram, Arjun, thanks so much for joining us right here on CNBC TV 18. With that, it's a wrap. Thanks to all the viewers for tuning in.